Hey guys, this video is going to go in a little bit more detail and actually getting some stuff happening, some interactivity on the screen. So uh, there's a little bit of scripting involved, but if you don't know any scripting, that's okay. Follow along. Um, I'm going to post the script itself on the description so you can just copy and paste. And if you follow the steps, you should be able to get this working. So first thing is you want to make sure you make a brand new project. Don't use the demo project because uh, I think the physics are a little bit messed up. Um, so I couldn't get it to work. So just make a new project. And uh, what I did here is I created like a little environment, just a floor, a couple of pillars around it, put a light there, directional light, and I put the camera. Now notice um, I made this character here, which is just a capsule. Again, I created these using the as or sorry game object other, and I just created it all right here. And then the camera, I positioned it in such a way you can see here right in the preview, it's facing, it's right above the character. So it's going to be the player camera. This is what you're going to see. Now, but if I go and play this you'll notice nothing happens. These are just objects sitting around. So what we have to do is we have to create a script that's going to make this character move. Now I found a script online and I recommend you look for scripts online and just play with them. You don't actually have to come up with a lot of this stuff because people have already done it for you. But uh, what I, I'm going to create a new script here. Um, the way you do that is you go to assets, create, and I'm going to create a JavaScript. And then here it is. So you can double click it and it brings up your editor. So I'm just going to copy and paste the script I have here, and I'm just going to go over this real quick. This isn't really a programming uh, tutorial, so I'm not going to go over programming. So if you don't know programming, you'll probably be lost at this part. Um, but in a second, I'll show you how to use this, even if you don't know how to program. So just real quick, we set up some variables here. The speed of your character, and this is completely arbitrary. You can make it whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want. And the rotate speed. Again, arbitrary number. You can make it whatever you want. Uh, and this function update is one of the functions that's built into Unity. What it does is it checks every single frame. So every time a frame is drawn, it's going to call this function. So if you have a, if the game is running at 60 frames per second, it's going to check 60 times in a second um, for whatever you tell it to. So in this case, we're looking uh, for a couple of things. What we're doing here is we're creating a controller. We're actually we're creating an instance of a character controller. We're going to call it controller and uh, we're just getting that component called the character controller. Now this doesn't uh, really go into what character controller we're using, but I'm going to show you how to attach it to your character. Uh, then we have uh, transform rotate, and if you see here it takes three arguments. Now rotate is just a method of transform. Again, it's not a programming lesson, so if you want you can look through the, uh, the documentation and see what all these do specifically. But for now I know that I need to give it three arguments, uh, which is the three axes. In this case, we're getting the horizontal axis. Then we're setting a, a forward variable, which is, again, uh, a method of, or an attribute of vector 3. You can look that up in the documentation. And then a variable car called the current speed. And then all we're doing is we're moving the controller through a method called simple move, which is a, a method of character controller. And then we're moving it uh, in the forward direction by its current speed. And then we're just requiring a character controller, so this won't work without a, a character controller. So again, I'm going to put this up so you can just copy and paste. Even if you don't know how it works, you can still get this to work by following the steps. Um, so what I do is I save it. And then what we do here is we take uh, our character. This is the character that we want to apply this script to. So again, the character controller that it's going to work with is the one we attach it to. So we take this. We can either drag it, or sorry, we can either drag it into the the character's uh, inspector menu, or you can drop it right on top in the hierarchy. And here you see it pops up. So now this character has a script attached to it. And you see the variables we created outside, by the way, it was created outside of this function. It's a global, well, global to this particular element. Uh, we created these uh, variables. So it's actually local for, um, for that purpose. But uh, it creates these variables here. So you can edit the speed right here on the fly for any variables that you created. Um, so now this character is going to move. Basically what it's going to do is uh, you press the forward arrow, turn around, move, blah, blah, blah. We see the camera is not following him. Uh, so this is actually an easy fix. There's no scripting involved with this because I already set up the camera. I positioned it in the way that where I want it. All I have to do is click, drag it, and drag it right on top of the capsule. So now the camera becomes a part of the capsule uh, game object. So now it's going to follow it any way it goes. So if you see here, uh, see how it follows it? So now you have a working character. And by default, this character controller we applied uh, to our 
ellipse to our little capsule has some physics built into it. Um, for example, uh, I can't jump quite yet. I haven't programmed, it, uh, programmed that in. But you can fall off this object. You can collide with walls. You know, you can't go through solid objects. Um, and again, if you just step off here, it'll just fall off forever. Um, one thing you want to make sure is uh, you can actually, you don't have to use an ellipse or capsule. You can use a box. You can import your own assets. You can import your own character if you made one. And then same thing goes for the environment. You can make this whatever you want. I just use this for demonstration purposes. So you can just import it using the asset import method I showed you in a previous video. And uh, just make sure whatever you have as your environment uh, has a, either a box collider, which is a component, so you add the component to it. Usually, actually, when you create it, it already has it. But if it doesn't, you go to physics, and then box collider or mesh collider, depending on what it is. If it's a box, obviously you apply box. If it's a more complex shape, you apply the mesh collider. Um, this has a few different uh, settings to it, but they're pretty easy to figure out. You can just play with them, and that will make sure that your character collides and doesn't fall right through it. Because if I get rid of this uh, collider here, for example, real quick, when I play. My character is going to go right through the floor. So just make sure it has a, a some sort of collider attached to it. And that's really it. Again, I'm going to post this, the script on the description. So you can just copy and paste the script using the method I just showed you. You don't have to understand anything. You just know that it's going to work. Just follow these steps and uh, you should be fine. If you have any questions, just let me know.